Thank you so much for coming, everyone. Uh, it's a real honor to be here. It's um, a real culminating uh, cumulative time in, in my life and career, so it all feels really good that everything's kind of converging uh, around this opportunity. And uh, I've never actually had to talk for 20, 25 minutes, so wish me luck. Um, all right, JK5, that's been my alias since I started tattooing in 94. Um, real quick, it started with Joey and Karen, my sister and I. Um, uh, it evolved into a Star Wars thing with Jedi Knight. And then the five was the five Buddhist elements, the five senses, give me five, nickel bag, three the magic number, plus two the Gemini that I am. Things are loaded and symbolic in my vernaculars or I sort of gravitate towards that kind of thing. So here I am, uh, well, maybe I should go over here. That's, um, yeah, surrounded by my, my dream world from 1977 <laughs> that kind of transformed and blew all of our minds of, if you were of that generation. So my eyeballs were seven in 77, and um, I think subconsciously I've been aspiring to, or just kind of doing it without being so aware of it, um, and that's just kind of creating a parallel universe with the scope and the breadth and the complexity of of Star Wars. Uh, so there's that, that mythology has always been sort of parallel to my path. And as you can see, Tom Carvel, classic icon from New York in the 70s, rocked my birthday cake. And I think for maybe five years in a row, well until I was 16 or 17, I had Star Wars themed birthdays. No, just kidding. Just a few, just a few. But that was, it's just the raddest, wonkiest Vader head. Look at that thing. Um, so. So yeah, here's some childhood drawings. Pretty ambitious with crayons and graphite. And uh, I kind of, I started here, as so many of us did, and I've never stopped drawing, um, you know, at an alarming rate ever since. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember, John and I were uh, sharing our love for the TV Guide, the object, the physical catalog that was TV Guide, and Jesus Christ was on the cover. And being the good Catholic boy I was, raised really inhibited but loving, supportive, clannish, Italian, North White Plains, an hour north of Manhattan, he blew, you know, he was uh, iconic and really scary at the same time. <laughs> and this, uh, this was uh, a rendering of uh, Jesus on the cover of TV Guide for an Easter special, spectacular two-hour movie called Jesus of Nazareth. So... From the beginning, it's been this sort of, I call it the Gemini and Tango, right? It's the word-image dynamic between just subject matter and imagery, rendering things both from life and from within, and practicing letter forms and logos and identities and, and type. So it's all just kind of evolved that way, and I'll be 45 in June. So, um, yeah, so cut to uh, partying way too hard at... Southern Connecticut State University in New Haven from 89 to 90 and a half, something like that. I basically failed out, had a blast, did well in my art classes, failed everything else, um, had a wonderful time, you know, visited colleges, partied all over the country. That's sort of what that time was about. Came home to a wonderful community college called Westchester Community College um, and got my shit together and raised my cumulative average from a 1.7 to a 3.9, and uh, focused and had this amazing professor who was a really good friend of mine um, that just really helped me focus and get my portfolio together. Applied to RISD, only RISD, got in, and that was sort of the beginning of a larger world, if you will. Um, that larger world is a good example. That is a pen and ink drawing of my face after reading a letter from my birth mother that I received um, 23 years, five months, and 19 days after I was adopted at five days old. So 
So I was adopted and raised by really loving, supportive, but super strict Catholic, Italian, and Irish parents. My dad was like an old school insurance salesman. He'll be 80 soon. My mom was a, was a nurse, and uh, my sister came along two years later, biologically, from them. So, you know, the Star Wars embodiment, the mythology, the sort of genre, the filmic and, and literary genre of the mythological hero's journey has always really resonated with me. And for 23 years, it's pretty dark and amorphous. So I could be that alien with that objectivity and at once just sort of document the world that I was actually really living. Um, so there's all these sort of dimensions and mystery and um, this blank slate that I could create my own identity kind of from. So I think that has a lot to do with why I got so seduced by tattooing and that embodiment and that became, you know, this is the time where I kind of ripped myself inside out and started getting heavily tattooed. Um, but I'll get to that. Uh, so, so yes, yeah, so I met my birth mother 23 years, five months, 19 days later. She is um, the warmest, most cosmic, Buddhist, lesbian, weed-smoking, vegan social worker living in Maine, <laughs> who is, uh, you know, one with our family. And I've got my daughter, Twyla, will be six, April Fool's Day, and my son, Sayer, will be three. So she gets to have biological kids for the way things unfolded for me, and she had a much darker story. So uh, that's, uh, that's sort of like autobiographically nuclear to, to my story and my work. So um, here I am. I created a mural from scratch uh, based on these parameters given to me by Wyden Kennedy, the advertising agency in New York. And it was for a Sprite campaign. And I just worked on this for over 100 hours in their cafeteria. And uh, it's the only photo of me um, immersed in the work. It's the only one I wanted in the new Rizzoli book, which uh, I will be signing copies of and sharing afterwards. It's my third published book, my first monograph with Rizzoli that came out last year. So, um, yeah, the campaign was uh, I Spark You, You Spark Me, Can I, I don't remember what else, but just a lot of cool information and palette and parameters that around iconography and, and colors and communication for the demo. Uh, here's just a tattoo example. I've got, gotten pretty known for uh, letter forms and type design and, and decorative ornamental script of a of a unique nature um, when I got to Brooklyn in 2003. Um, here's a graphic that's coming out only in Tokyo in August, which is kind of a bummer. It's supposed to be <laughs> it's just starter. They couldn't, we couldn't do it. In the, so if you're in Japan, you can pick up this cool little capsule collection. This is the RJK5, a nice nerd out hybrid of a basketball and sort of cryptic Star Wars elements. You see Boba Fett's boot slash R2's central pod foot, and then little Lobot action that I kind of jk 5 would with just more elongated kind of spiritual form, if you will. And this was produced by Kid Robot in 2010. And that is the Tatooine game ball, and that's the Astro Mech All-Star. So everything, everything has a language, right? I'm drawing all the time, and then I'm, I'm I'm kind of uh, appropriating literature to all the visuals that I create, and then I'm making crazy lists and obsessed with whatever meandering subject matter. So I'm kind of always anxious to get back in the sketchbook and draw and document and, and uh, you know, get stuff, get stuff out. So this is my family. That's my son, Sayer Lee Sunrider, Aloy the First, a.k.a. JK7. That's Twyla Maggie Snowdrop, my daughter. Um, she'll be six, and uh, that's us at the beach this summer. And that's my wonderful wife, Adrienne, who is John's wife's best friend. And I was really close with Mindy at RISD, too. So here's a couple spreads from the book. Here's a rad Star Wars project, official Tops trading cards project, where I took 100 of them. We could choose between, we could choose as many as we wanted. I'm like, I'll just break my ass and choose 100, cool. And um, they're like little die-cut stormtrooper heads, Vader heads, and I just did my thing with all of them. That's just one photo from the book, this cool montage. And that's um, sort of one of the only digitally created and, and manipulated images in, in the whole book. So it's just sort of a pastiche and all these layers of, of real graphic stuff. Um, yeah, here's some tattoo examples. Um, 
You know, I've been tattooing for 20 years. Uh, got into tattooing at RISD in 94, all punk rock style. Um, my good friend Forrest, who was a really brilliant reduction linoleum printmaker and draftsman, we were in a class together, and he just saw the way I drafted and drew, and I really wanted to be a dirty painter at the time, and I kind of stopped drawing for that one year to really explore and keep things organic and open for me at RISD, and then uh, he's like, man, just start drawing again. And then I got the letter from my birth mother, and that was some kind of profound experience to document and give visual life and language to. So here's just a few examples. This is stuff within the last couple of years, I think. Um, yeah, yeah. So here's some process stuff. Everything starts from scratch, something from nothing, a handful of, of, of implements, you know, colored pencils, graphite. It all starts with just fast, energized, equidistant lines, nice composition, spacing, um, and then colored pencil, and then it just sort of topographically gets more and more articulated until it gets really refined in ink, and then the stencil's made. And for anyone who's tattooed, I see some people that are in the audience. Um, you know, the stencil is made, and then that's adhered to the skin, and then you kind of trace that, and then you do the shading and the color by eye, or I do a lot of freehand stuff too. So a good example, that's good Morrissey stuff right there for you Smiths nerds. Um, I'm a huge fan, but yeah, the boy racer. So process, refined in ink, wet stencil. Now, remember this wet stencil aesthetic, because something's coming up in the future. Yeah, okay. So this is my first book. Um, Self-published, me and my best friend Matt Clark, who's an art director at the Ace Hotel and has worked for Nike and has done a million amazing projects, but he's really humble and unassuming, so unless I'm there promoting him, you won't know that he did all this brilliant artwork for Modest Mouse and tons of, you know, he's just a really brilliant, beautiful guy. But we were living together at RISD in 94, and I started burning through these sketchbooks at an alarming rate once I got my, that letter from Mary, and we were becoming the best of friends, and tattooing's vernacular was making its way into my work and kind of synthesizing with everything I was doing at the time, and the work just got really autobiographical. So, and, okay, so there's a lot to say, but uh, we published this, we self-published this, released it worldwide, May of 99, and it's called Subconscio Thesaurus Nex. And it's rhythmically pronounced like Tyrannosaurus Rex, but subconscious, thesaurus, and next. That's how I think, that's how I feel, that's how I draw, that's how I write. And at the time, I was doing lots of Japanese tattoo work, super blown away and inspired by Japanese printmaking aesthetics, those Buddhist narratives, Sanskrit letter forms, those, those elegant calligraphic strokes, everything kind of being pulled down from a horizontal plane. And that became sort of a signature font that now you'll see how that letter form has evolved 10 years later where I can just kind of write that way, you know, really fast and naturally. And as my, as my boss at Three Kings Tattoo, where I work, says there's a Christmas party every year and there's the asshole awards. And my awards were um, thanks to JK5 for creating a language no one can understand and for having more sporadic Instagram posts than a 12-year-old girl. <laughs> So, okay, so these are the Flowbots. I had a show at A-Life in the city in 2003, and the president of Kid Robot at the time came and saw all the three-dimensionalizing potential for, for that show, or for my work to take on these three dimensions. So we did a series of nine, 11 three-inch vinyl action figures. And this is whole, this whole mythology. There's, let me just run through this, John, if I may. This is Wiki, Wiki, Wiki. Dog Boy Redneck, Jay Caliber, the ghost elf knight of chivalry and elegant design. <laughs> Kid Creactivator Flovex with pencils and crayons for arm, glowing vaginal brain orm biocomputer. Um, kind of Superman-esque translucent blue rebel symbol knowledge crystals. The one human of the archetypal band, Matt Clark, my best friend, the, the modest mouse artwork as his flight suit. And it looks like his vaginal ass is in the front because I love him and I had to do that to him. Uh, and this is pretty peculiar peppermint pony, sort of the, the Tauntaun or the Pegasus or the transport beast of the crew. All nature, 
kind of a 60s poet dead mother uh, named Rainflow. Um, takes the form of all, of, you know, creative cumulonimbus activity, sunsets and things, and, uh, and that's, um, where, where's the other one? Cutie Cane's not here. Cutie Cane, and that's Little Chief Big Piece. Where's Cutie Cane? There they are. They're inter interchangeable siblings. Um, so this is, these are the Flowbots. Kid Robot produced these in 2007, and I've been working on a world of, of new media and merchandise with this mythology and this kind of universe of characters and, and the kind of story that I want to tell for a really long time. So we're aspiring to all kinds of just new media and merchandise, aspiring to an animated feature at some point. So um, there you go. This is the book cover um, right here. So I hope to engage you all, and they'll be, they'll be for sale, and I'll trick them out and sign them for you. Um, but this is it. And uh, Rizzoli published and released this March 4th last year, so it's kind of a year old now. And it's the best of my output through these mediums, right? The subtitle is Sketches, Tattoos, Drawings, Paintings, and Objects, exquisitely, exquisitely designed by my dear friend David Mashburn. And here's some page examples. So that's Baphomet um, in the middle, this pen and ink drawing that became a poster in a series of prints for my friend, actually, who just passed away, who is uh, the, the Fool's Gold art director, Dust the Rock, RIP. Love you, man. Uh, so that, that's from that. Uh, that's the original drawing. That's a series of pen and ink drawings that became silk screens, and these skulls just keep kind of reiterating. Uh, there's some examples of the Topps trading cards. Here's um, the juxtaposition of Conan the Barbarian and the Bush administration. Uh, a series of uh, graphite drawings on antique music score paper where it's uh, Thulsa Doom morphing into the snake and then Bush and his uncanny resemblances to all these monkey expressions. <laughs> so I was doing a lot of, a lot of the, you know, there's a whole section of the book called War and, uh, you know, all my kind of politically reactive, unapologetic content uh, around that stuff. So check this slide out too. This, these are pages from the book that became um, prints and fabric for something special down the line. Uh, this too, so I, I said, remember this slide. So I always thought that, <coughs> excuse me, the layered, the layered aesthetic of all these saved, wet, human-touched, dried, brittle, as if they were roses inserted into a book or something that you press and preserve would make a really beautiful, interesting pattern or have a life of its own. Um, and uh, something really special happened with Comme des Garçons um, January 23rd, just this year, I was lecturing, I was actually, it was just this kind of day in the life convergence. I, uh, I got invited to give a lecture and a presentation uh, for a class at RISD. So it was this full circle cycle back to this moving classroom environment and Providence has evolved and changed so much. And I had this big flat screen TV behind me and all this analog work, because everything's analog at least until I synthesize or collaborate with someone who has certain sensibilities to take it into other, other forms or other realms, right? Um, and I had no idea what they were gonna do, right? Uh, it's kind of a, a really moving story. You can check it out at Forbes.com. <laughs> um, but so, so they, it, it was just this kind of karmic converging as everything in, I strongly believe is. Um, ripple effect where I was tattooing a Japanese kid he was a fan of my work. I said, man, I haven't been back to Tokyo since 2004. The, book's, the book was out, and I was like, I just want to do a, a pop-up gallery show, some sort of launch event signing in Tokyo. I said, please, just you know, spread the word. Share this book with your people. And it was like one person couldn't do anything, then the next person could, and had this position at Com, Com de Garcon for a long time. And then the next email I got in September said, Joseph, very exciting news. Come to Garçon, wants to do a project with you. I was like, holy shit, wow, cool. I've been aspiring to something like this, knowing its potential for a long time. So to make, a, to make this part of the long story short-er, <laughs> uh, I'm such a concise guy. It's my middle name, right? Um, so uh, yeah, I had one, meet, one secret meeting with Adrian Jaffe, who is Ray Kawakubo, her husband. And he was a really calming soul, really handsome, bald, Buddhist, 
70-year-old gentle man who was really moved and excited by the book, and I had copies signed and ready to go for he and a gift for Rei Kawakubo in Tokyo. She got a copy of the book, and myself, it basically they said, if you will just let this go and trust us, we're really thrilled to partner with you, but you can't say anything until it comes down the runway. Because no one knew. That's, they're, you know, sworn, you're sworn to secrecy. I just hoped it would be something meaningful and interesting. So there I am teaching at RISD. This, I'm a total Luddite, so this freshman hooked up the laptop to the flat screen, and this is what came down the runway. And I cried. I totally cried. It was really, really exciting, really genuinely, deeply emotional. And uh, I'm cultivating a wonderful relationship with them now. And I actually just got the, the confirmation email yesterday that they're inviting me to transform and illuminate and create these installations in all the Dover Street Market spaces. I just got the email last night, man. Yeah. Um, so it'll be London, New York, Ginza, and, and Beijing. Uh, so I get to do my thing with... Um, with the environment at these spaces. So everything just keeps evolving. Thank you. <laughs> um, so yeah, that, and, the, and here is um, one of my favorite Paul Clay quotes. Drawing is like taking a line for a walk. Okay, before I run out of time, I definitely want to get into a couple things here. If I could, how much time do we have? Five minutes, cool. You guys, Paul Clay, big fan. Uh, drawing is like taking a line for a walk, so I encourage all of you to pick up a sketchbook, grab a pen, blend it into your own physical hand, document, get back to what's warm, natural, organic. Uh, it's a really important balance in the universe in general that we're writing with our own hands. Um, and, uh, you know, this is a really true statement for me, you know? I mean, Making mistakes and erasing and fucking up time and time and time and time and time again is the way you grow and improve and strengthen and, and hone your craft and get more and more adroit at whatever you're trying to do. So keep fucking up, everybody. Um, and I, wanna, I, wanna, I, wanna, I really want to conclude with... Uh, a, it's perfect I have this Bobby Brown microphone. I've never gotten to do this, but... I, I, I'm no freestyle rapper, but I've been writing my whole life, so here is... Uh, something I want to end with that I wrote um, as the final paragraph for my own description of, of Subcon Next in the book. Um, you ready? I'm not. <laughs> in essence, I always just do and stay true like the woo to my need to bleed and feed rhyme, illuminate time, riddle, pontificate, deconstruct, and assimilate, convert covertly, introspectively, Intently insert he and she divinely, the collective conscious we. React, run on, ruminate, rumi, mate, like rumi. Get my fun on and associate. Distinctly dissolve the gate so timely and timeless with a vibe called blessed. Never rest, id confess. Organized, mystical, mythological sense of the mess with, of the mess, with zeal and zest. Cerebra cerebrally celebrate cull, cross-reference, cross-pollinate, creatively crystallize, realize fate, optically optimize, fantasize, applying eyes, Christopher Wallace size. <laughs> the boss of the cross, Chris. Letters and word swords cut through ignorance with bliss. Hit or mission, Swiss miss, precision, swash driven, the all ball served swish. I simply wish to be a satellite dish. The inscribing swashbuckler, Orion's belt unbuckler, <laughs> cosmically crossed out and crisscrossed, for this is just my method, man. Yeah. <laughs>